These are some, con con some concluding remarks from overall for our anniversary celebration. Um, as the Lord brings us together in this time, you've heard over last week and part of this week as well, as we talked about Nehemiah rebuilding the wall, and as we talked about God's purposes, God's great purposes in almost a hundred years in restoring his people. As he brought his people back out of captivity and back to Jerusalem, as they began to rebuild the temple, and then as he brought Nehemiah and another time, so Ezra came back for spiritual renewal, God used Zerubbabel, who was the governor, he used uh, Jeshua, who was the high priest at that time, then he brought Ezra back for spiritual renewal, and then Nehemiah, he touched his heart, and then brought him back to lead the people in rebuilding the wall. And that's the message, the overall message that God had put in my heart for our time together as we were celebrating. You heard Pastor Renee re referencing some of those this morning as well. And if you were with us during the retreat, you heard Pastor Lorena talk about it. She prayed about it beforehand, all of them had. And you heard a lot of the missionaries as well talk about some of these verses. And at first they were a little hesitant because they said, oh, but you were speaking about that, so should I change? And we are so happy that God spoke the same thing and the same words and the same message. It's just a confirmation for all of us. And so as we come to a conclusion this morning, we'll still have some more celebration this afternoon. But as I said just before the ensemble sang, what a sad anniversary it would be if we only looked back, right? It would be great. Oh, God was so great back then. But that wouldn't be so great for us right now, would it? Because God is the God of today and God is the God of tomorrow. Our God is a God of hope, brothers and sisters, of hope, of the future. You and I do not have to look back just at the good old days. We're grateful for the good old days. We're thankful for the good old days. We needed those good old days. They built a foundation on which there is something that is standing, that is something eternal and good for God. But brothers and sisters, the good old days are not enough. They're not enough for you, and they're not enough for me, because I live today. I don't live in the good old days. You live today. You're not, we're not back there anymore. And so I want us, just as we come to a close this morning, to look at a few verses in the whole story of the rebuilding of the wall and the temple and the restoring of God's people. Let's look at Ezra 3, verses 10 through 13. And as we come to a close this morning, this is when they have completed the foundations of the temple. So this is before the wall is rebuilt. This is many years before the wall. But look with me. Here's an interesting passage. When the builders completed the foundations of the Lord's temple, the priests put on their robes. They took their places to blow the trumpets. The Levites clashed their cymbals to praise the Lord, just as King David had prescribed. With praise and thanks, they sang this song to the Lord. He's good. His faithful love for Israel endures forever. And then all the people gave a great shout, praising the Lord, because the foundation of the Lord's temple had been laid. What a great celebration it was. People were so happy. They were rejoicing, as many of us have been rejoicing last week and this week as well. But there's another part of this that you may not have noticed before that is kind of an unusual part of this story. And look at what comes next. And then in verse 12, we read... Uh, back up, please. There's a click. Oh, okay. But many of the older priests, Levites, and other leaders who had seen the first temple wept aloud when they saw the new temple's foundation. The others, however, were shouting for joy. The joyful shouting and the weeping mingled together in a loud noise that could be heard far in the distance. So here on this day of great rejoicing, there is, there's a whole other group that was there in the beginning. There's a whole other group that was there in the good old days. And they're remembering what the good old days were like. They're remembering Solomon's <coughs> temple. That first temple was grand and glorious. In that first temple, there were wonderful resources. Solomon had all the wealth that his father David had amassed, including some that God had given him. And those that remembered what it was 
looked at what was on that day, they remembered the past, and then they looked at what was in front of them, and you know what they did? They didn't rejoice, instead they boo-hoo, boo-hoo. This is so pitiful compared to what was. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you and exhort you this morning, especially among us who are perhaps some of the old timers or who remember other times and we think better times and more glorious days than we are presently. I encourage you to learn something from this passage. God was doing something then. Don't let your view of the past and the good old days poison what God is still going to do today. Don't let your heart be filled with regret for what was because God can still do what is and what yet will be. That's a good word for Lighthouse this morning, brothers and sisters. We're thankful for the past, but God does more. You serve God in your generation. You serve God in your time. And God will make these days glorious. To encourage them, then God sent another message. And we read in Haggai, this is part of the story, this is part of the whole part, we read in Haggai on October 17th of the same year, the Lord sent another message to the prophet Haggai. He spoke to Zerubbabel and to Jeshua, the high priest, to the remnant of God's people. Look with me in verse 3. Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? How, in comparison, does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. Mm. We, we feel that way sometimes, don't we? What was was so great, it was so grand. Or others, or other places, or other times. But here's the message of the Lord. Be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Jeshua. Be strong, all you people left in the land. And now, get to work. Get to work. We've got to do more than just look to God. We look to God and then we get to work. That's how things happen. If you, all you do is look to God, look to God, oh God, yes, God's great, God's great. That's great, but you've got to get to work. That's what God says. You get your eyes fixed on Him, and then you get to work. And He says what? Get to work. Why? For I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God who was with Lighthouse in the beginning is the same Spirit of God who is with us this morning. He's the same God. He's the same God. He has not changed. And God says to you and to me this morning, I am with you. Get to work. Get to work. We are working. But there's more we can do. There's more God has for us. I encourage especially some of you who are of the older generation, or as we laughingly say, the Old Testament Christians of Lighthouse. I encourage you, don't just look back. Look ahead to what God will do. And God says, get to work. I'm with you. And don't be afraid. And then what does he say in verse 9? The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. I, the Lord of Heaven's armies, have spoken. Why could God say that? Because the glory of Jesus would be in that temple. This was the temple, although Herod would be would rebuild, this was still considered the second temple. Jesus would be. And there's more as well. This was referring to a time in the future. And so we look at that. You see, God sees not just the past, but He sees the future as well. He knows what is yet ahead. Now let's look at one or two more verses, and then we're going to stop this morning. Look at Zechariah. This is part of the story as well. This is what the Lord says to, Z to Zerubbabel. We know this so well, don't we? What does, what does he say? It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in Zerubbabel's way. He was the governor who was going to rebuild. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple in place, the people will shout, May God bless it. May God bless it. Now, look very carefully at this as we come to a close. The people, when the stone is set in place, this is God's work, brothers and sisters, this is God's work, the people will shout, May God bless it. May God bless it. But do people say that in the very beginning? No. It looked so small, didn't it? 
when Zerubbabel, they looked at it, and some of the people were crying. Oh, this is such a small thing. It's not like what was. This is insignificant. There's not a lot here. But the time will come when people will see the completed work of God, the completed plan of God in your life, through your life. God's not finished with you yet, brothers and sisters. God still has something to do for your life. Some of your lives, there aren't, they aren't in a great shape right now. Some of you, God's still working on you. Actually, God's still working on all of us. And people let, may look at your life, and as we would say in Chinese, not so much, not much of anything. But the time will come. You stay with God. You work with God. When the people will say, may God bless it. May God bless it, because they will see the work of God. And then look at what comes next as it comes to this. Then another message came from the Lord. I love this. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of the temple. He will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. Look at verse 10. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. The Lord rejoices to see. Sometimes we start working for the Lord. Sometimes we answer the call of God. Many of you yesterday in the, in the retreat, you, God was stirring your heart. Some of you got some clear messages. God wants you to do something. Others of you, you don't yet have a clear message or a clear direction, but your heart was stirred. And you were saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And it may seem small to you. It may seem like nothing to you. It may seem little or insignificant to you in the beginning. What great thing can come of this? What great work can come of this? Look at what this says and apply it to your own heart, to your own life, and to Lighthouse as well. God says, do not despise the small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Do you know why I think the Lord rejoices sometimes when we are not yet rejoicing in the beginnings and in the things that seem so small? All we see is the smallness. All we see is the insignificance. All we see is the handful of people, the small step of obedience. And it seems small. What can God do with it? Why does the Lord rejoice? I believe the Lord rejoices in these small beginnings when He sees the work to, that the work begins because the Lord sees the end. Yeah. The Lord knows what will be. The Lord knows when you say yes to Him. The Lord knows when you obey Him. The Lord knows when you go where He's called you to do. The Lord knows when you do what He has said to do. The Lord knows when you give the offering that He has prompted you to give. The Lord knows what will be. The Lord knows what will come. And the Lord rejoices because He says, until they start, until they begin, nothing happens. Until they take the first step to go, nothing happens. But when people begin to obey, when people begin to begin, then... God rejoices. He rejoices because He sees what will be. He knows the end when you and I begin. Amen? And so, brothers and sisters, on this 25th anniversary, as we celebrate God's goodness to us and His faithfulness to us, we look back and we say, thank you, God. But we don't say, stay stuck in the past. We say, thank you, God, for the foundation. And I say, yes to you today. There's more today. And the Lord rejoices in the day of small beginnings. Amen. Amen. When the Lord gave me this message and prompted my heart, I told Pastor Renee, it was before September 25th, and I was listening to the book of Nehemiah as I was driving home. And that day... The traffic was really bad. It was really bad. And so I got to hear almost the whole book of Nehemiah. And usually I'd be reading Nehemiah in NIV or something else. And this day I was listening to Nehemiah in a modern translation. Put up that, that last slide just to encourage you, to give you a message from the Lord. Uh, I'm going to skip that one because for the sake of time, uh, the next slide, just the top one first, the, the short verse. So the wall was completed, we read this last week, on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. This great work of God that began, right? It began, and God rejoiced. This is what I read at first. But as I was listening to it driving home, I was listening to a modern translation. And do you know what the modern translation gives us? 
That's right. So on October 2nd, <coughs> the wall was finished. What is today? Are you sure? Yes. It's October 2nd today. I went, oh! <gasps> when I was listening. I was talking with Pastor Renee. Pastor Renee said, are you sure that's exact? I said, yeah, I'm sure it's exact. Because the old Persian records, we have, we have copies of the records and we can, make, we can make comparisons. And there's some dates in the Bible that are exact. We know exactly what those dates were. God planned for this. You say, that's a coincidence. Oh, fooey. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> this is God's message to us. God's encouragement to us. 2,400 and 60 years ago, exactly on October 2nd, they finished rebuilding the wall in Jerusalem. Exactly, exactly. On, a, on this day, 2,460 years ago, because they began the work of God. Hey, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about that. God has a message. God has a plan. God has a purpose for you and for me. It may begin small, it does begin small. It usually begins small. But when God is in it, it doesn't end small. It's a great work of God. It's a great work of God. Find, fulfill, follow God's purpose in your life, and He will do great things. Amen. 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 God. Let's stand and let's pray again. We're, just, we're going to pray just a minute. Thank you more surprises. Let's pray. Let's pray in response to this. That you may have something small in your heart, don't despise it, and don't say it doesn't matter to God. It matters to God. It matters to God, because God can do something with it. We rejoice. Lord, as we come to the end of this service, the Lord, though there are more celebrations ahead, God, we thank you for the rejoicing that we've had last week and this week. Lord, we thank you for all of those who sang and danced and played guitars and expressed their love to you and, and their, their joy and their appreciation for all that you've done. Lord, we thank you for the good word from Pastor Renee this morning, encouraging us that you have a plan for our lives, even though we seem so imperfect, even though we seem so little. Lord, we thank you also for this final encouragement to us this day as we look at your great plan that you worked out when people said yes to you. And Lord, this morning, again, we thank you for the good old days. We thank you for those faithful ones who were there in the beginning, who sacrificed in the beginning, who gave in the beginning. Lord, we do, and we honor them, and we bless them. But Lord, we don't want just to look back. Lord, we too want to be part of your good and great work. We too want out of our lives beginnings that will bring something great and wonderful for you, your good work. Lord, we thank you for the confirmation to us of October 2nd, that just that blessing, Lord, that just came to our hearts. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that you rejoice over our beginnings. We thank you for you see the end. We thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.